Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In the last couple of tutorials, I covered the topic of uh, image registration using various libraries, and I'm adding one more via this video, especially after uh, reading a couple of comments by you guys. And thanks for your suggestions. I completely overlooked this library PyStack Reg, even though I've used it personally myself as part of image J in the past. So this is basically a wrapper around image J to enable us to work within Python. So what do I mean by that? First of all, let me exit out of this screen and show you exactly where you can get this library by going to the documentation. So just search for PyStack, right? Uh, I mean, basically, I can include this link as part of my description of this video. But once you go to its PyPy page, it's very well documented. This is partly why I did not actually create a video. But then I also realized that uh, some of you may not know of its existence if I don't create a video. So uh, what I'm going to do in this video tutorial is to basically take a few lines of code from here and then from here to actually show you how to do a couple of tasks. So if you think my video is boring, go ahead and look at the documentation under, uh, you know, uh, uh, online. So let's quickly jump into <clears throat> our spider IDE. And uh, first of all, to install this, go ahead and let me zoom this one more bit so it it's a bit easier for you to see. So go ahead and install pip install pystackreg, pystack reg. Okay. Once you have that, then you can go ahead and import this library, right? And I also copied a couple of lines from their documentation. First of all, there are five different ways you can register images. One is just pure translation, which is just movement of your image in X and Y direction okay, to register with the, the first or reference image. And the other one is rigid body, which includes translation plus rotation, okay? And most of these options are not available in a few libraries I showed you in the past couple of tutorials. That's why maybe if registration is an important task for you, this is probably uh, the library that you would like to use. And scaled rotation, as the name suggests, it has translation plus rotation. In addition to that, you have scaling. So the image size, you know, can go up and down, right? I mean, scaling. Uh, and affine transformation is, again, all of these plus shearing in addition to this, yeah? So now you're actually, for example, keep your bottom left, pin the bottom left of your image and then shear the left, you know, or, uh, or pin the left corner and then move the right side up and down, right? So I hope you know what shearing means. So anyway, so that's your affine. And bilinear is nonlinear transformation, and uh, it says it does not preserve straight lines. And frankly, I have never ever used bilinear. Please go ahead and use it because the implementation is simple. Affine worked great for me in the past because, especially in cases where I'm, uh, you know, uh, where the acquisition conditions change, for example, or the optics of your image, you know, acquisition system is such a way that you're not getting a, uh, you know, a uniform or a good image. So affine can be useful, but most of the time, translation or rigid body would probably do the job, uh, especially if you're working on electron microscopes. Then rigid body may be a good one. Uh, uh, so now let's actually move down to see how to use it. And I, I've written the code, well, I copied bulk up the code from the page I just showed you, and of course I adapted to my images. So I'm just showing you the code and not typing it on the screen. So first of all, uh, let's import pystack reg, and from there import stack reg. Okay, so this is uh, this this is the method. This is the uh, function that actually contains all the tools that we need to do translation, rigid body, and all that type of uh, registration. And I've loaded a couple of images. And again, just to show you what images I'm working with, uh, I actually have uh, let's say about 12, 13 images, 14 images in this case that we can register. But for now, let's just do look at the first two. Okay, so just to show you how these images look again they are not uh, much uh, i mean they they are uh, images of uh, a rock but uh, it's not very clear but they do ha need a little bit of uh, translation in this case 
Yeah, I do not have any better examples, so please, uh, I apologize. You know, if I'm not using images that you can relate to, uh, getting ha hold of images, you know, for demonstration purposes is not an easy task because I don't want to break any copyright laws by just, you know, uh, uh, taking someone's images. Okay, so these are the uh, images, and I have 14 such images. But first, I want to show you how to take image one and then image two. Okay, one we call it reference image and the other one is the offset image and then register these two. Okay, just two images at a time. And uh, again, this is uh, pretty much the same example that they used in uh, 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 in online documentation. So the first one is translational, which is again, we imported stack reg. So initially you create an instance of your registration and we called it SR. Okay, and that instance is stack reg dot translation. So, Whenever I call SR right now, that implies that I'm applying a translational transformation and then this is how you apply that, okay? SR.register transform. And the first one is your reference image and the second one is obviously the second image, which is the offset image in this case. That's pretty much it. So now let's go ahead and run these lines, these lines to show you how it looks like, okay? So there you go, this is the output image. Again, I don't think it makes sense to look at just single output image, but uh, let's actually look at the other one, rigid body transformation. The way you do this is exactly like uh, translation, stack reg dot rigid body instead of translation, that's it. Same thing with affine. I kind of grayed out the scale rotation transformation or commented this out uh, because I don't want to run it and uh, you know uh, you can you can uncomment it if you want I'll share the code or you can copy it from uh, the, uh, the other location I showed you so rigid body and scale rotation as the name suggests scale rotation affine is again stack reg dot affine and application of this is pretty easy all you do is sr dot register transform and then your first image and the second image okay bilinear pretty much the same so let's run all these lines of code up to here and the last line, last line, I didn't talk about this. This is nothing but plotting all these four different types of registrations, that's it. Or output images. Okay, so here you see uh, the input image, the translation, rigid body, and affine. Again, in this case, it doesn't make much of a sense uh, and you cannot see it unless you put these images one on top of the other. But I just wanted to show you how the the first example works which is you have a reference image and an offset image okay so this can be if you are from astronomy or other fields this can be a very useful way because you have uh, or or even from remote sensing right so you have one image and the other image and in remote sensing you may even have a scale rotation depending on how the satellite moves and all that but this is how you do that now typically for microscopy you have a bunch of images like i just showed you not just not just uh, 14 or uh, 13 images, but in reality, you may have even more. If you're working with a FibSim, for example, you may have hundreds or thousands of images. In fact, I just took 13, 14 images out of a TIFF stack that I have that contained like about uh, 4,000 images. Uh, so I just took these for demonstration purposes. So let's get back. Now, I have individual images. Let's say if you have individual images, you can create a stack out of it and I hope you know how to do this. I covered this glob uh, topic in the past, but just to quickly summarize it, we are. Uh, I'm going to use tip file library to actually stitch these images together and save them into a tip stack. And glob is just walking through the folder structure, right? So this example here is showing that, okay, within tip file, import tip writer, okay? And with that, create a blank image which is my image stack dot tiff, okay, which is located in this folder as stack. And then I'm going to go through each file within my fur alignment folder, which is basically the folder I just showed you, this folder, okay, go through each file, go through each file, well, with an extension of dot tiff, just in case if you have other images, you know, other files in the folder, and then stack dot save tiffile.imread. So if even if it doesn't make sense, go ahead and copy and paste this code so you can create your own tiff stacks. If you already have a tiff stack, great. 
you have a good starting point, okay? Uh, by the way, if you don't have, the reason I'm creating this tip stack is the next part of the code takes in a multi-stack image and then aligns each slice. That's exactly why I, I added this step, okay? This is not part of the online documentation. I just wanted to make sure you guys know how to create that stack. If you have individual images like I just showed you here, if you have individual images, they also have another example to walk, uh, work with these individual images or you can actually go back to pick one of these and put it in a for loop or, uh, you know, and then just go through each image and register to the first image or register to the previous image. It's up to you, okay? So if you have individual images, you can do that. Now let's say we have this stack, okay? So my stack, so let's go ahead and run this. So we, it creates my stack image. So now there should be my image stack right there, okay? So this is the one we just created by adding all of these uh, images together or not adding by, by stacking them together. So just to have a quick look at this, my image stack, so you can actually now step through you know each of these images and i'm not sure if it shows up very well in the recorded video but you can see some frames it's actually jumping a little bit one pixel here and there it's very difficult to see uh, but it is actually moving uh, a little bit so uh, again i do not have any better example in this case uh, so if you have a very good example please share it as part of this comment so others can try it out but this is all i have for now so let's uh, get back to the code. So now that we have our image stack.tiff, let's go ahead and continue with uh, the registration process. So the way we do this registration is, and again, uh, from PyStackReg, we are importing stackreg just like before, except uh, now we are reading a stacked image here, okay? So if you run this, let's empty, let's, okay, clear all the variables, let's clear the screen, so it makes it a bit easy for us to follow. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and run these lines so you can actually see how our uh, array looks like. So in this case, we have 14 images, all unsigned integer eight data types. Okay, and the size is 1104 by 1720 or 1720 in X and 1104 in height, okay, in, in Y. Now, uh, just like before, we are going to initiate this uh, stack registration and we, I'm going to use rigid body for now, okay? And this is how you apply it. Out previous is applying this SR dot register transform stack, okay? Register transform stack. What did we do before? We did register transform, that's it, okay? Now we are adding register transform stack. For this, the image needs to be a stack, and now you can provide a reference. So there are many, uh, at least four different types. One is previous, which means if you have 21st image, then the ref uh, it's compared against image 20 when it's doing the registration process. If you select reference equals to first, as the name suggests, uh, every image will be compared to the first image. You can also do a mean of all of these images, and you can actually compare it with the mean or you can actually take uh, the mean of the first 10 images and finally you can do a moving average of 10 images. If you have 1000 images, uh, moving average of 10 images and then it actually continues this registration. No one better, uh, I mean method is better than the other. It completely depends on how your data uh, or images have been acquired. So you can test it out all of these. So I have used uh, previous at least uh, uh, quite a full, uh, you know, handful of times, and that actually works very well for me. So I'm going to use that for now. So uh, out previous is I'm going to use my reference as previous, and uh, uh, let's go ahead and run this. So I'm not sure if I ran that line. So let's go ahead and run these lines. Okay, so there you go. Now out previous is our output stack where all slices are registered. So out previous is again the same dimensions 14 by 1104 by 1720 but unfortunately it changes this process changes the values from unsigned integer to a floating point 64 where you can see the values are all uh, you know 99 point 123 point so if you would like to save this as a tiff image you have to convert that into 
a uh, uh, an unsigned integer eight. And uh, uh, again, these steps are not part of this code shared by you know shared by this documentation of uh, you know of this library PyStack Reg. But uh, I added these lines so you don't have to search for it in case you don't know this by by heart. Okay, so uh, we're going to use NumPy and then uh, converting this into integer eight by using as type. Okay. And uh, I'm going to use again tip file library to save this is a as a stack. So the code right here. So let's go ahead and run it. And we should see my align stack dot tiff as our output my align stacked. There you go. So that's it. And let's open it in image J and see if it looks any better. Now you should see a very seamless transition from one slice to the other. Again, I'm not sure how this translates or is gets captured in this video that I'm recording, but this is a very nice registration that I can see. So the data set is ready for segmentation now. Okay, so here is a quick explanation of something. Again, uh, a great example of how we can leverage existing libraries that are out there uh, and uh, to, to perform advanced tasks like these you know, affine, scale, rotation, rigid body, and other translations. So again, this is PyStack Rich. I'll share this uh, code with you as part of this, uh, uh, my GitHub page. And I hope you learned something new. And again, uh, I'll go ahead and try this on your own samples. I hope you'll love this approach for image registration. Thank you very much.